knowledge. And though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity wanteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abide faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. May the Lord and his blessing be reading and hearing. Thank you. 
Statements read as such. The mission of the Pastor's Aid Ministry is to be empowered and led by the Holy Spirit to effectively aid, serve, love, strengthen, intercede, encourage, and serve the pastor and their family. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. Right. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Right. Colossians 3, 23, 24. The ob objective of the pastor's aid ministry is to assist the pastor within the ministry, to serve as caretakers of the pastor, contributing financially, socially, spiritually, representation and support. Our primary goal is to show appreciation of guidance in the church. Commitment is required. Each individual desiring to be a member of this ministry should be committed to fervent, unceasing prayer while affirming the spiritual, physical, and personal and the financial well-being of your pastor and their family. In addition, the ministry is committed to being 100% tithing ministry and will exemplify the fruits of the spirit Christian conversion characters conducted and a commitment to Christ
service is in honor of our pastor, Reverend Jordan. We all miss so dearly. Yes. But we know that he's pulling for us in everything that we do. We miss him a great deal, a great deal. But we know that he is right here with us. Right here with us. Yes, I can hear his voice. Yes. And at this, at this time right now, I'm going to ask, um, just before we do the memorial prayer, I'm going to ask uh, Minister Pam M. She has to be up there last night. If she would just read the words, I know to read the words on the blanket that we have for him. I know I'm sorry it's not in the front of you, but she will read those words for you. And. Praise God, everybody. I'm going to move in the middle of the sanctuary because I can't expose it a little bit. So, <laughs> praise God. We love our pastor. Amen. We miss him dearly. So it says, Pastor, P is for the preacher. God called you to be. A is for the anointed, gifted to, to you to minister with his leading. S is for shepherds, appointed to lead God's flock. T is for teacher, who studies and shares God's word. Amen? O is for obedience, a heart of compliant submission to him. R is for righteousness, by which you live and are blessed.
and we shall not want. So right now, Lord, we just thank you. And then, Lord, I ask you to thank our president, Father God, that had we all assembled here this afternoon, Lord. But most of all, Lord, we're lifting you up this afternoon because you said if you be lifted up, that you will draw all men. So we're lifting you up tonight, this afternoon, Father God. We lift in the name of Jesus on high. We lift in the name of Jesus on high because you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Worthy, worthy, worthy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank God and amen and amen and amen. This prayer is in lovely memory of Reverend Michael Jordan, our pastor, our friend, our brother, our beloved. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the spirit that dwells in this house, God. Not a, a crying spirit, oh God, but a spirit of worship, God. A spirit of worship where we can lay at your feet, oh God, and tell you all about our problems, God. Yes, God, we feel sad sometimes in the physical, God. But we know that you will give us the strength to go on, God. We miss our pastor right now, oh Lord God. But we know, oh God, that he's rejoicing in heaven with you, oh Lord God. So continue to bless us, oh Lord God, as we forge forward in you, oh Lord God. Realizing, oh Lord God, that you make no mistakes, oh Lord God. So as we represent this service to Pastor Jordan, oh Lord God, we give it to you first, God. Because it was you, oh God, that have loaned him to us, oh Lord God. So continue, oh God, to be with us, to guide us, to strengthen us, oh God. As we go through this season, oh Lord God. Touch each and every one of us, oh Lord God. For only you know what we stand in need of, oh Lord God. We thank you, oh God, for giving us a pastor like Matthew Jordan, oh God. We thank you for his spirit, oh God, that labor in this house, oh Lord God. A spirit, oh Lord God, that we know what we must do, oh Lord God, to keep the ball bouncing, oh God. Keep our spirits, oh God, lifted up, oh Lord God. Keep encouraging us, oh Lord God, to run this race, oh Lord God. For we know that this race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but they that endure. Help us to endure even in this, oh Lord God, for you are a merciful and a just God. Continue to bless the first family, oh Lord God, our leading lady, oh God. Continue to bless her and keep her right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Whenever she gets that sad and lonely, oh God, let her know, oh God, that she is not by herself, oh Lord God. Let her know, oh God, that you are with her, oh Lord God. Keep in the time such as this, oh God. And then touch your children right now, oh Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. For only you know what each one of them stand in need of, oh Lord God. Yes, they miss their father, God. Yes, they miss their papa, God. But God, give them the strength right now, oh God, to move forward in you, oh Lord God. We thank you, oh God, for the life, oh Lord God, that Reverend Michael Jordan has led before us, oh Lord God. We thank you for his loving spirit, his kind spirit, his understanding spirit. Continue to be with us all, oh Lord God, as we go forward in you. This is my prayer. I pray in your holy and your righteous name. And the people of God say amen. 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 Thank you so very much for those prayers. Reverend Oden received the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior at the tender age of six years old at the Overcome Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey, under the leadership.
Archbishop of Reverend Eugene Woodson, where he was baptized and served on ministries. Reverend Oden recognized, recognized his calling to minister to God's people and answered to the Lord at the age of 16. By the age of 19, he was officially licensed to minister God's word. Reverend Oden has directed several choirs in the state of New Jersey, King of Kane University Gospel Choir of Union, New Jersey, and served as musician director for the Seton Hall University Gospel Choir in South Orange, New Jersey. Reverend Oden Jr. traveled to Nigeria, Africa in August 2009 to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ there. He experienced a different kind of culture and realized that no matter what continent we reside on, we all ultimately serve the same God. <laughs> Reverend Oden participates in street ministry with the passion for saving souls. He is a firm believer in evangelism and taking the gospel of God to the streets, reaching out to the young and old through preaching and praying. And we're going to leave it right there. He has a whole, a whole list of things that he has done and he is still doing. After this beautiful choir give us another selection, the next voice that you will hear is that of Reverend Keith Oden, the Grace Temple Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey. Yeah. 
this church family, to Lady Jordan and to our deaconess, Debbie Johnson, for extending the opportunity to come and share in the place I call home. I'm grateful to be here today. Uh, still have mixed emotions, but we are we are here today. I want to preach, um, and forgive me if I cut my segment of my promise message today. Um, I was taught well, trained well, and I was fathered well by the late Reverend Michael Jerry Jordan. He's 
not only Amba, but he's Alpha. That's the beginning. He's Adonai. That's Jehovah God. He's our baptizer. That's the one who converts us. He's our blessed hope. He's the branch. He's the bright and morning star. He's the baby of Bethlehem. He's the bread of life. He's the living water. He is a he is a bomb in Gilead. He's a shelter in the time of storm. He is light in darkness. He's the Lamb of God. He is the baby of Bethlehem. He is a rock in a weary land. He is a shelter in the time of storm. He is a way out of the way. He is a miracle worker. And you can find, I know some of you asking me, well, why are you giving us a definition without telling us who he is? Well, the definition of his name speaks about who he's been, what he's going to do, and what he will be in the near future. Can I talk to somebody? It is in this pericope of this passage of scripture that we find that the psalmist is writing, and while he is writing, uh, he wants the sanctuary, the people in the pew, to know uh, that no matter how hard life gets, uh, he wants us to know that uh, the earth is still the Lord's, uh, and the fullness thereof. I know you're broken, you've been baffled, you've been bent over, you've been bowed, but is there anybody that can testify, I'm still blessed, I've been crushed, I've been hurt, I've been harmed, I've been hindered, I've been hanging on, but guess what? I've been helped by the King of Glory. And I think I'll tell you, you know, throne speaks of uh, royalty. There are many earthly kings and many earthly queens who have royal palaces, but I want to suggest to you, brothers and sisters, there is no king that's, that can match our king. Our king is creator. Our king is comforter. Our king is consolation. Our king is God. Our king is great. Our king is good. Our king will make a way out of no way. Can I talk to somebody in here that can testify about the king of glory? Now, you know, I, I, I've shared with you so far in my exegetical homiletics real quickly of my introduction who God has been to different writers of the Bible, but I need to pause a moment, Angie, and ask anybody in here, has he ever made a way for anybody in here? Has he ever opened doors for anybody up in here? Has he ever lifted you when your life seemed to be at your lonely mark? Is there anybody in the room that can say, when I was sick, he healed me. When I was broke, he filled me. When I was down, he lifted me. Or somebody ought to just slap your neighbor, high five and shout, the king of glory. Way. Uh, when I read this scripture, this scripture is clear. Psalm 22 talks about, it tells of the cross. Psalm 23 tells of the shepherd's crook. But Psalm 24 tells of the king's crown. This great hymnal, because we have gotten so modern in church now where they don't sing hymns in the church no more. But this psalm is actually a hymn. Um, as I previously stated earlier, it was uh, evidently composed to celebrate the removing of the Ark of the Covenant uh, from the house of Obed-Edom, uh, Jeff 2, Mount Zion. If you know anything about 2 King or 2 Samuel chapter 6, you'll discover that this psalm goes with the story of 2 Samuel. Can I talk to somebody? I can hear, I can hear Mother Coleman now. You better learn the facts. I, I can hear her. I can hear her saying, learn the facts. So to tie it all together, uh, David wanted to move the ark of the covenant. He got caught up in a celebration of shouting uh, and the Bible said while they was moving the ark on a cart uh, that the other had put his hands out because he thought it was going to fall over. And watch this. Uh, it goes to show you that you got to be careful when you put your hands on what belongs to God. So it is. So it is in this scripture 
David is dancing before the Lord. He danced out of his clothes and out of dancing out of his clothes. And I need to pause a moment and ask the church, what's wrong with us? Why do we have to beg people to give God praise? Why do we have to pacify you to ask you to sing along with the praise team? We are not here to entertain you. We are here to bring elevation so that when the word comes forth, you can receive the word with clarity and persuasion. So David is dancing and they get happy. Everybody shout, there's a, there's a celebration. You see, you can't come to church and not have a celebration. You know, I've I heard people say, it don't take all that. I'm not moved by like they're moved. Teach his own. Some of us shout. Some of us dance. Some of us cry. Some of us wave our hand. Some of us just sit there and watch others. Then there's others. And I can hear, I can hear, I can hear Pastor Joan right now saying, what, 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 what? What is it? It's in the scripture that Uzzah puts his hands out and he goes to touch the untouchable. See, we got to be careful as church people that we don't put our hands on what belongs to God. Because our hands is too short to box with God. So he put forth his hands and the Bible say he lost his life. God killed him. He struck him dead. And you know, it's amazing. People can come to church and talk about the preacher in the sanctuary. And us only put his hands out to help God and yet let me go look for the All right. Uh, 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 anyhow, so this song is tied to that story. David got angry with God. And sometimes when you when you are in the presence of God, God will do what is not naturally understandable to your mind. And in this next season, I want to tell the Mount Hollow Baptist Church: be cautious, careful. Uh, because they, this is a crucial time for this church. When we read this scripture, it is clear. He says, let me remind the parishioners of the power of God. He says, number one, and I want y'all to see this, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world and what? Let me break it down for you. Can I break it down and I get out your head? Well, he says, the earth is the Lord. Uh, and uh, when I look at this, uh, the king of glory, he's savior. He's sovereign. He's strong. He's sensational and he's surreal. He says, the earth is the Lord. That's personal. They that dwell therein. That's, that's possession. For he has established it upon the seas and founded it upon the floods. Uh, that's his prerogative. Talk to me tonight. Uh, but then he gives us instructions on who should minister in the house of the Lord. He says, uh, he that has clean hands and a pure heart who have not lifted up his soul under vanity. I need to pause a moment because we got some preachers and some uh, problematic pew members uh, who don't got clean hands. So this psalm has opened up this hymnal with a positive poetic prophetic proclamation. The world and they that dwell there, that's pleasure. Talk to me tonight. And so he tells us that this is a song that was sang when they took the ark from Obed Edom's house. Now you gotta realize after those are died, David said, just take it over there to Obed Edom's house. If I want to enjoy God's presence, I'll come over there. Don't nobody bother me. Leave it in Obed's house. Now, what happens when the glory that belongs in God's house departs? Now, I know somebody said, well, that's even 
strongly as pastor, that doesn't happen. I suggest you go back and read 1 Samuel chapter 4. Eli had two sons who were wicked. I can't hear nobody. And uh, they got killed in the war and somebody came back and told him he fell over, broke his neck and died. And one of the wives of his sons named his, their child Ichabod. Which means the glory had departed. Let me close with this. He says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwells therein. Everything belongs to her. Three things out there, and I'm, I'm going to get out of here. First thing, when you read this scripture, you'll find, number one, Elida, you'll find the kingdom. Number one, we can keep looking up. Everybody shout, keep looking up. Keep looking up. First thing you find is keep looking up. He says, there is the Lord, the proof of the world, and they that dwell in the earth, the upon the seas and founded upon the floods, who shall ascend into the hill. That word hill uh, in the Hebraic actually suggests the mountain of God. And who shall stand in that holy place because any place God is, is holy. You don't necessarily need to be in a sanctuary for you to be holy. Talk to me, son. Uh, he says, and uh, then he goes on to say in that verse, he says, uh, he gets down to, this is the generation of them that seek thy face. When there comes a time where everybody starts seeking the face of God, that's when the glory is going to come down. Lift up your head. And so, as I went, Erskine, trying to figure out what was he actually trying to convey when you read this scripture. The entrance of the ark, when he said lift up your head, it's a sign of the church. It's a symbol of the church. That we ought to open up our heart and let the Lord come in. You see, in Jerusalem, in their, in their worship temples, they have tall doors. So the entrance of the ark with uh, the attending procession, he would tell them they would lift up the doors off the hinges. My grandfather was one of the best carpenters and handymen I knew. He would tell me, keep it, lift that door off the hinge. He taught me it, the easiest way to get a door off the hinge is to take a hammer. Hit the bottom of the head. Y'all didn't say nothing to me. Hit the bottom one first. Don't hit the top. Because if you hit the top, you'll knock the whole head out of the socket. Y'all not talking to me. And we would hit it from the bottom, then hit it from the top. He said, now, lift the door. <laughs> the problem is, some of us are hitting from the top when we should be starting from the bottom. <laughs> so he lifts it, we would lift the door off the engine. It was more easier, instead of us trying to tap around. If you had an old house like we had, Pop Pop would just say, get my... Go downstairs, keep it, go downstairs, boom it, go down there and get my drill. And take the electric drill and unscrew the hinges from, so he wouldn't strip the wall. Some of us are stripped because we're in a hurry trying to get the hedge, the door off the hinge. Let me go a little further. So it says, lift up your head, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up. I like this scripture because whenever you invite the king in, there will always be glory. You see, he's not only the king of glory, but he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of God. So, Psalm 23 is the previous psalm. Psalm, which is a divine, talks about the divine shepherds. Psalm 25 talks about the acrostic prayer for instructions. But the key verse is not verse 7 through 10, everything. The key verse of Psalm 24 is verse number 3. 
Can I get a witness in here? Yeah. Yeah. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Who, what, when, where, why? And I found this out. The key word is, in the text, is the Lord strong and mighty. Yeah. Yes. I got to leave you now, but I got good news for you. He's still strong when you're weak. Yeah. I think he told Paul, he told Paul, he said, when you are weak, that's when my strength is made perfect. I got to leave you today, I got to leave you, got to leave you. But number one, we got to learn how to keep looking up. Life will have you with your head down. Life will have you crying. Life will have you questioning if God really cares. Life will have you wondering how you're going to pay your rent when all your money is spent. How you're going to do this? How you're going to do that? But somebody ought to just tell your neighbor, keep looking up. So, number one, you got to keep looking up. But then number two, he says, you got to let the king come in. Up your heads, O ye gates. You know, sometimes life will cause you to feel baffled, bothered, and it'll make you feel like you're being a, a, a smothered. But but he says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door. And the king of glory. Not might, not would, but shall come in. Lady Joan, I want to leave you with this. Every now and then, we got to stop by the shall station. I'm not talking about the shell gas station. I'm talking about the shall station. Whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I wish I had a witness. Uh, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord. And you're not hearing me say, but they that wait upon the Lord, he shall mount up from wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. Psalm 27 1 says, The Lord uh, is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Then he said, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen. Yeah, I feel good now. Well, I'm going to leave you, but not only do you to lift up your head. But he says, secondly, you ought to let the king come in. I know your heart may be broken, but let the king come in. Matter of fact, when you read Genesis chapter 7, I was studying something the other night that I think is very interesting, Minister Fonda. When you read the scripture, uh, the Lord told Noah, come down and your family into the ark. You know, that was the first time you find a gospel invitation. Talk to me somebody. In other words, in other words, God is not just going to come in. But you've got to invite him in. Oh. I believe you. My island, it's been good being with you. Lord of your life. 
You know, the problem with Judas was uh, he didn't mind calling Jesus Rabbi. Rabbi means master. Or it means Rabbi now means teacher. <laughs> but when you read the word Lord, uh, Judas never made Jesus Lord of his life. He made a master because he called him by his name. I'm not believe you now, but I just want to tell somebody that uh, you need to make him Lord of your life. Well, when you read that word where it says, and the king of glory shall come in. The Hebrew word for, uh, for, uh, for the word king is melech. M-E-L-E-K. It means to be royal. It means to be ruler. It means to be lordship. It means to be the head over. It means to be covered. It means that you can be under him. Hupatasso in the Greek means to be under. And when you fall under the law and make him lord of your life, Anybody that can uh, kneel before God uh, will be able uh, uh, to stand before anybody. Uh, and I wonder today, uh, is there anybody here uh, that can sing with me today? Uh, he walks with me. Uh, he talks with me. Uh, Hear my pastor pushing me on. Talk, talk, talk over there. I can hear him now saying, Son, keep on going. Yeah. And because I'm back, as I got to say it, one Friday on the hill called Calgary. Y'all know what he did. He died to the earth, rock and real like a drunken man. I said, did he die? Matthew said, he died. Mark said, he died. Luke said, he died. Oh, my God. 
shake you off. Huh. You can always get up. Huh. Tell somebody. Huh. Yeah. 
to ask Mother Paul just to come up close to say a couple words. And Mother Coleman, don't look surprised. We already told you. Just come up with uh, Paul, if you don't mind. So his encouraging word 
was for us to stay in the life of Jesus Christ. And that stays with me. Now, I first met Pastor John the first Sunday he preached here. I called the former pastor. I said, that's the one. All right. He said, stay here. So I know I get everything, you know. Somebody gets on my nerve, but still. He's going to stay here. When they found out who he was, oh, yes, they begin to talk. They say, he's going to stay here. And he stays here because God said, he has a seat in the kingdom. And we always talk and say, listen, don't press the down button. Press the up button. So that's where he at now. He has a seat in the kingdom. Praise God for it. I invite him and his wife to my 60th birthday over there by the Ethiopian way. He had a good time. And you know, going on and coming on. The first Bible studies he came in, he heard me singing, "Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Well, he take that for himself. He likes it. Okay, and we go on and go on. And I tell you, that pastor, you can see that he was a good You can see that he was a loving It's a, it's a difference. You don't have to look around to see the difference. When you are called, or you are set, or you just go on your own. Yeah. It's a difference. Yeah. Praise God, praise God. You got our eyes to see that. Yeah. Who is called and who was set? Yeah. And who just go on their own? Yeah. But when they go on their own, they go, oh, you know, they, they go contrary. Yeah. Because they go on their own and nobody said that. God said that. God said that. He said they go out and call his name and he didn't send them anymore. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. I am here this afternoon to say thank you. I am so glad that I know Pastor John. And him and I would talk well. He is not here now to talk, but the people call me. I think I am kind of close. That's Sister John. They call me and ask me questions. But I got no answer. All I can say, he's resting. And I don't want that burden on me. Because praise God. We have a God that you can go to any time. And he is no respecter of person. The preacher preach, but he's here for you and for me. And we can go to him any time and we can call on him any time. And that's what I like about God. He is no respecter of person. And I'm putting my hand where it's that concern because I don't want him to do anything to me. Contrary. You got to keep your hand on your side. He didn't say you know when. He did not say to do anything. Don't do it. Just leave things alone until he call you and he send you. Right? Okay. Well. Because God is my strength, and I cannot do without His word. 
is up here now and picking up right? all kind of seed. I have little birds <laughs> come to my window. And I said, oh, look at this. They're praising God. He should be here the window. Praising God. And Pastor John always says some things. I tell you, I laugh. Sometimes I just, I just think over what he says. And he brings a joy in my heart. But right now, I said, God, I wish they could have done something for him to teach him this. But God keep telling me. He's mine, and I take it. So I say, all right. All right. Praise be to God.
Excuse me? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. It's for the other basket is for the passes in. Yes. You need another basket? Okay.
um, Andy were dating today, and I thought about it, and I thought about what Reverend Jordan would say. He would say, we were here to do what you have to do. Just do what you have to do. So that's exactly what we did, and what a great day it has been. I think, of course, Reverend Keith Odin. I know it was difficult for him. We talked a few times, and I know it was hard for him, but I told him that, you know, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay, and, and Pastor George would want you to do this anyway. Thank the um, Grace Temple Choir. Yes. The musicians, they, if you left, but we thank them too.
you have to try and try. You can laugh at some of his silly jokes, laugh at some of his silly jokes. But we love you.
This will go in my office. I'll find some way to put it. Robin, we'll find some way. Uh, uh, I want it visible whenever people come to my office. And can I say to you, I had a wonderful pastor. I don't think no one would ever be able to replace him. Amen. Uh, and that's all I'll say, so I'll start crying again. All right. Again, thank you so much. Let us pray out and be dismissed and bless the remarks, I mean, the, the food. Amen? Amen. 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 God, thank you for this time of being in your presence. Thank you for your power, your peace, and your protection. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this co-op of Pastor Zane Ministry yes. who has so elatedly and so illustriously have poured into this ministry of the late Reverend Michael Jordan. Lord, I pray that what they may happen for him and his family, let it happen for theirs now. Let them re reap everything they've sowed into his life. I thank you now that we have come together to pray. We've come together to worship. We've heard preaching. And now it's time for us to depart, but never from your presence. As we go in our different directions, bless us and give us guidance, goodness, and grace to get where we have to go. We ask now in Jesus' name, now God bless the refreshments and the dinner that have been so prepared, preciously prepared by this, oh God, by this peculiar sect of people. I pray now that you would bless the chicken, oh God, that has been baked. The bread, the bun, Lord, thank you for the greens and the string beans. And thank you for the cake. Lord, thank you for the punch. We give you praise now for every hand who prepared that meal. And as we go out to enjoy supper, I pray now that you would make it super in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody repeat after me. Go in peace. And not in pieces.